Now, you'll notice that I, I'm not publishing the reports, I'm using SharePoint. I think um, there's a few advantages on this, especially if this is the method of your organization, how you're going to do reports. One thing is, typically Power BI, it's a different process than a lot of IT processes in the fact that we do our development in a program in Power BI desktop. Um, Typically, it's hard to try to version control this because we have different files to save. Trying to share this and if multiple users want to access the file at the same time, it can be difficult. We want to get away from emailing files, which is probably, I, I think everyone would agree, can cause a lot of headaches. So we want a centralized way to kind of keep version control. And let people know when people are working on files. SharePoint uh, has that. So if we hover over my Excel uh, demo. If I am a developer and I've been asked to update the report file or update the model, what I can do is if I click these three buttons and down to more, I have an option to check out. Um, this is kind of the best way to, to for an organization using SharePoint to check out. Once you check this out, it's going to display this little uh, symbol here. This means that I've checked this model out and uh, me and my organization, I'm going to make edits on it. Um, this can allow other people to re to know that I've checked it out to make my edits. Stop people working on the same file at the same time, getting confused. Stop different versions of the file being edited at the same time. I can download this to my. Yeah. So the lock it out, does it affect uh, RBI service to access it? No, you can still connect to it. Um, it just stops other people editing it. And then once I've once I've checked it out, I've done my edits. I can uh, upload again and check in. Or I can discard my checkout, you know, discard my edits. I can make a comment. Nothing. I did nothing. The other great advantage I think of SharePoint is version history. Um, this keeps a version history of the edits that you've made and modified. See here, I've got version number two because I checked it in again. I didn't actually do anything, but it keeps that version control of what I've done if I had made edits. So I think this is one really big advantage of SharePoint. Trying to get uh, off just people having folders, maybe on a shared drive where People can edit this at the same time. Definitely get away from emailing across to other people. Uh, the question was, is it going to lock the data? So are you talking about in the report file or if you're editing a model file? It would be in, the, is it going to re refer to the most recent report file? Or is it going to always be like a version, like the most up-to-date? <laughs> report file data in the model. Yeah, so you're asking if the if the data is always going to be most up to date with the version. The the report file is connected live to the model file. Um, the model files are essentially inside it, it just contains kind of the metadata. Depending on how you're connected, mostly probably importing, that's going to be imported and that's the data you're connected. So it'll be the last uh, refresh of your data set. So that's going to always be be live. What you're editing here is more kind of the metadata. So how the visuals look and things like that. And um, when you when that schedule refresh happens, which is maybe, you know, eight to 48 times a day, depending on your license, that's the data that it's going to be connected to. Does that answer your question? Yeah, so you're, if you're going to archive data, you're not going to want to do it this way. So mm -hmm. archiving of data will be more on your SQL server or your backend uh, pieces. <coughs> what you will get, though, is you'll get a snapshot in time of whatever that. So there's two two things Steve's talking to. The demo file mm -hmm. is purely a report only. There is no data in that file. So if you look at the size of both those files, the file size for the report is like a couple kilobytes. And then the other report that has the data model in it, if you're using the import mode, It'll grab that data and it'll keep that data compressed inside that file. So every time you upload a new data model, 
it'll snapshot whatever was loaded in that data model at that time, and it keeps it. And it'll have all those versions. So if you have 50 versions of file, and every time you update your data and publish the or put the report here, it'll have 50 different snapshots of data over time. The downside of that is you can't access that data after the fact. So I can't do like state and times like, hey, what was this data like as of February? What was this data like as of January? You can't you can't jump between time range. It's only looking at whatever is currently out there. But you have the ability if you totally botch your model and you just jack up stuff, you can always revert back to the last version, refresh your data, and then push it back out here again, and then it's not current again. So any of your model design changes would also be captured there as well. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So the question was, um, when you create a new global measure, will your report developers get access to it immediately? The answer is yes. This is live connected. Pretty much the second you publish out a report, um, when you are connected in, in this, say we're developing a report, you can just hit refresh here and it takes, because we're live connected, it takes not even a second and then you have all the all the new reports. So yep, it's, it's instant, it's live connected straight away. Another. Yeah, I had a question. Um, the way that you're doing it by connecting directly via SharePoint rather than publishing, does that impact anything when you actually look to automate the refresh of the data sources underneath or is it straight through basically the same as you'd normally set it up if you publish that report directly to the service? Yep, so the, the question is on how you, if it affects the um, refresh and the refresh can still, if we go down to here, we still have the data set available here. So we can still set up the scheduled refresh in the same way. Click on the refresh history as well. When you go from SharePoint into Power BI, you can actually get two ways of scheduled refreshing. So there's refreshing the data mm -hmm. and then there's refreshing the individual file as well. So if you're doing reports as well, you'll see two buttons up there, scheduled and OneDrive. So SharePoint essentially is OneDrive behind the scenes. So you'll actually see if you update your data model and and it pulls that, that new version of that file or report in, you'll see refreshes on both. So you can schedule your hourly refreshes all day long. And then when you upload a new report, within around, I've seen around 20, 10 to 20 minutes, that file gets pulled into what's in OneDrive. So OneDrive pulls it in and it's, in, it's, in, it's live at that point. So OneDrive is constantly pulling, or Power BI is constantly pulling OneDrive every so often. Their SLA is one hour. I think they gave themselves a lot of bandwidth there to like what the SLA is. But um, there is a, a blog that Seth wrote around this that there are some gotchas. You don't want to like delete something and then re and re put it back in SharePoint. So deleting <coughs> if you're doing this method will break the unique identifier link between SharePoint and what is PowerBay.com. So if you're going to publish through SharePoint, you kind of just want to put everything in SharePoint and just kind of let it all flow through into Power BI and be careful about deleting things and removing things because that'll break some of your links and some of your automatic refreshes won't work at that point. So since Mike's talking about something I wrote, <laughs> um, I, I do like I, I do like this approach ish, right? Like just be careful with it from the standpoint that um, a, as Mike suggested, when you make that connection, unlike when we publish hit publish on a file, the same name will always replace the data set in Power BI. So it's looking at the name of the file, right? I can grab a completely different model name it the same thing, publish it, and get a replacement of the data set, right? And that report. When you do the SharePoint way, it, it's a it's it's basically a do it, right? So if something breaks or somebody in your business doesn't understand this process, which is the other like big caveat in my mind, if you're gonna implement this, everybody's got to know how it works because you're not going to be able to publish files anymore. You're going to have to save them to the OneDrive because if you go into that desktop file and try to publish, it's going to blow up or it's going to throw an error. Essentially, in that connection, though, there's there's a, a potential possibility that I've run into multiple times where you you broke something in that connection and then you try to replace the, the Power BI file and it creates another data source with the same name. So now you have two data sources and reports with the same names and then you got to go into version history to kind of unwind where you were at. And sometimes it, I, I, I haven't been able to recover that. So the challenge there is if I am sharing a report or I've embedded a report. I have a larger issue because I can't replace something in the service. I've got to blow it all away 
and set up a new connection, which regenerates another GUID report, right? And I've got to replace that in all my downstream shared elements, right? So just be aware that there's some challenges in that first portion of things um, that you you want to be really cognizant of from the standpoint that everybody should use the same methods. You should be using check in, check out. You should be like diligent about that process because that's the way you're going to interact with things in that Power BI ecosystem. Um, after that, I'm fully on board. <laughs> Data set or one one source, many reports. It, it's it's fantastic. I'm not saying that this is a bad method either. Um, tit for tat. Just know that there's there's some of those pieces in there, and if you're willing to um, have the ease ease of use, where you're just sh like saving things, and then you know it's all set, or if you like manually hitting the publish button. That's it. Yep. And again, I think it's a great point for you know very large organizations. Um, I think I said this is more kind of not at a premium or a very large. There's other other tools you can use, such as having an analysis services model in the back end. Um, you know, these come in a lot more expensive, so smaller organizations might not be able to, to afford this straight off the bat or even have a, a use because they don't have as much data. I would say it's your development team, right? If you have yeah. a couple of people developing, so this might be a very appropriate method. It could be a wide audience for consumption. I, I would argue actually this method like you, you should be able to, you should find this in every organization like like it just depends on uh, like in larger organizations you may have business units that that run more this way because there's some great things in power bi that i hate in the enterprise the yeah. fact that if i go if i go model like huge enterprise model i lose all of the ability to like tack on ticky tack on other data sources right where if i'm using power bi and this source where i like I have a, a Power BI file as a data source, and that's my live connection for all these other reports. And somebody says, oh, uh, by the way, like we're doing all this stuff in Salesforce, and we need all of this stuff plugged in. Great, now I got to build all the ETL pipelines to get that into my enterprise. Or I can just go connect to that, pull that in, <laughs> and it's right there. Like shadow IT stuff then, or like uh, departmental? No, I would say it's, it's folks kind of grabbing control. Business it. enablement? So, yeah. yeah. So this is this is self-service. I mean, this is, okay. I mean, the idea here is like, there will be experts in your area that are super duper Excel gurus. They're going to know how to model data. They're going to understand the information. And I and I think a lot of these approaches, <coughs> where we're going to just start with this approach. Start with working with your analyst people who know the data and how it binds together. Because when they go ahead up in front of the IT organization, they can already make the relationships, fill out the tables they want, kind of do a lot of the front work that is the most costly work yeah. when you're doing an IT project, because all yeah. the ETL work is very expensive. Right. If I can send someone out like a little team of SEALs, Navy SEALs, and figure out my data model for me, yeah. come back to me with the model, and then, okay, you've been using one year, I'm mm. going to build this thing up and do 10 years of the same thing. Mm. Oh, that saves me so much time, because now I know exactly what I'm trying to build to. Okay, so this is a, a piece of the agile uh, prototype. Yeah, I would yeah. say this is part of that fail, fail fast kind of thing. You know, okay. work very quickly, iterate very fast, and then you come back behind this and support it with larger enterprise tooling, analysis services, bigger SQL servers, or whatever you want, data warehouses and lakes and such. So right now, um, one of the downfalls on this is you kind of you can't make many changes to the model. If we look at the release map coming up, we have <laughs> in August 2020, and this is as well using analysis services data sets. Um, and this just comes straight from there. So we can basically extend them, extend our models. Um, obviously, this is on the release map, so I'm not sure exactly how this is going to work yet, but we see this this getting a lot more powerful um, when they're using analysis services. So think of this like so what we're doing here is we're putting a live model out in the service. Think about having like connecting that live model and then adding your own data on top of it, mm -hmm. right? So that's that's like the quintessential like amazing tool. I could have two analysis services or two Power BI reports out there, and I could connect to both of them and pull parts of them together to make another analysis services model and publish that one. So now you can have this cascading effect across models, like this is uh, ops. This is HR. This is whatever sales, you know, and then you you can now start blending pieces of those how you need to. <coughs> and I think this is like a game changer. Like there's no other tool that's doing this kind of stuff. Maybe there is, but I'm kind of <laughs> but I think this is going to be a really, really good. There's a couple of MVPs that are just 
over the moon excited about this feature coming out. This was one of the most exciting things, I think. And if you've not seen this, this is the um, is it the power platform release path? I think it's called. You can Google power platform release. Yeah.